You never know who's watching you. Because when I was out there getting high, there was other people I was watching. I wouldn't say nothing to them, but I would just watch them and be like, wow, I want to be like that guy. Or I want what he had. I want to be sober. I, I want to, you know, get my life back on track. Today, as I look back on it, it was insanity. It was crazy for me to do them things back then. So I, I, I like to, sometimes I just lay here and I just reflect on a lot of negative things that I've been through and how close I've been to death. I've been close to death on, on many occasions, many occasions for $5. I put my life on the line for $5 back then. Welcome to my house, to Mi Casa. Mi Casa, Su Casa. By me having to go through this process of getting housing down here on Skid Row, it took 11 months, and, and at that time, God was preparing me to have a house. And for me, this building was really a blessing because they have everything I need, you know. They have a therapist, a psychiatrist, everybody I needed was right in this building. So I didn't have to go outside the building, you know, because at the time I didn't want to be around no crowds and I didn't trust the streets no more. Everybody was out to get me. You know, I just didn't want to go in the streets no more. I had enough, enough was enough. I was down here in my addiction for a while and I didn't even realize how much resources was right in front of my face, you know. I didn't know. I knew the mission, you can go in the mission to eat and sleep, that's all I knew. But as far as recovery programs, I didn't know there was recovery programs. I didn't know it was doctors around and all that, you know. But once I opened up my eyes and Started reading the signs, standing in front of the sign for three years and never read it, you know. <laughs> so that's when I started going in and asked for help, you know. Paul, we, we're going, we're just going to check on him right now to see how, how his day's been going. Because we all have our ups and downs, good days and bad days. So we're going to see how he's doing today anything he need or what we can do for him. And to make sure he continue to meet with his case manager. And, um, you know, got a good rapport with the property manager because it's good to build good relationships with everyone you come in contact with. It takes what it takes for each individual to stop doing whatever they're doing. You know, you have to have some type of experience. Some, some people, like for me, it took me, they had to threaten to send me to the prison. I never been to prison before and, and I'm not built for prison. So they told me you going to the pen, to the big house. And I said, you got my attention. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Top of the morning. Top of the morning. How are you today? Good. I was speaking on you earlier, uh, how positive you, you stay. Every time I see you in good spirit, good attitude, despite what goes on in, in these, these buildings, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people come with a lot of complaints. You know, we all got complaints. But through it all, you just continue to stay uplifted and positive. And, and that's a big thing for residents, you know. What I did basically for me is that I learned that you really can't change nothing. Just keep pushing what you got to do for yourself. I mean, if you can help somebody along the way, it's an extra gift. But right, right. One, two, two, three, three, it's a whole bunch of little stories and a lot of stories in a little place. To pinpoint one person, it's really hard because everybody have an effect on my life. Today, I can actually say I have peace because I understand me. Everything I had to go through, it made me a better person today, you know. Um, I have more respect for everyone. I always do whatever I can for anybody because a lot of people are there for me. A lot of people don't see Skid Row as a community. They just look at it as 
that name, that name just hold a negative, you know, concept to it. But it is, Skid Row is a community and there's a ton of resources down here. You know, it's like a circle, a cycle. Because the same group that put me in this apartment, I now work with at the leasing office. I'm able to work with them, you know, they watch me grow. They see me come in looking for housing. Coming from drugs and where I've been, I know I want to do something that's going to be dealing with people like me. Mental issues, drug addiction, homelessness. It's been a, it's been a lot of moments. Uh, and I can honestly say today I feel like I belong. <laughs>